we all know every time when we put implant into a, a socket, immediately anterior socket, there are three things that we need to consider in order to make it work. And that's pretty much given. The gap, the socket, and implant. What do I mean by that? Well, first of all, you need to look at, uh, ideally, the socket, get, socket is intact. Number two, you want to put an implant, the ideal position is a little bit palatally. Why? Because you want to leave a gap right there, right? Now, but the, unfortunately, there's a lot more to that because this session is about biology. In a perfect world, everything is going to stay the same way. But once we start adding biology to the soft tissue and the bony tissue, suddenly things get a lot more complicated. Therefore, we want to further the thinking process and look at actually three things here. What is the size of the gap? What is the socket size? And how does the implant dimensions affect the dynamics of this whole biology? Well, with that in mind, first of all, let's talk about gap size. In order to understand gap size, we need to understand if there's a gap, should we put bone graft in there or not to fill the gap? Well, let me show you three patients treated at three different points of time in my career over the last 15 years. The first group, basically, after I extracted the tooth, I put an implant in and leave the gap alone. That I was treated to this, this group of patients around 10 years or so ago. Now, then there's a second group. Always put bone graft in the gap. Now, then there's a third group. More recently, the last four years or so, not only after the implants place a place in there, put implant bone graft in the gap, but also put bone graft on the outside of the outside of the bony plate too. So now, those are the ways to manage the gap in general. What works best? Well, let me tell you. This is to be published material. What the authors did is they recall all the patients that had implants placed over the last 15 years and uh, immediately with the different types of gap management. The first group, without bone graft in the gap, what they notice is the negative facial contour over 70% of the time have that problem. Over six years, mean six years follow-up. Now, how about when we put bone graft in the gap? It looks a lot better. Unfortunately, we still see a partial collapses here and there, depending on the bone thickness, the bowel type, all right? How about the last group there? Unfortunately, this group has the least follow, shortest follow-up, two years, but it seems to give us the most promising results. So now, why is that? How does that affect the gap size? Well, let me show you this patient here. Well, th this is basically the data right here. Now, again, I'm not here to tell you what to do. It's up to you. But if it's up to me, based on my knowledge in 2013, I'm going to graph inside and outside, all right? Now, why? Put, because look at this case here, simply putting bone graft in the gap does not solve the, all the problem there, okay? Because you can see over time, the buckle plate still collapses there, all right? Now, what size gap, gap should we leave then? Well, in my opinion, the key to the size of the gap is after that inherent remodeling, we can still have enough bone to compensate for that rich remodeling. And furthermore, we need enough room for the prosthesis to emerge. 